Let's practice multiplying fractions and mixed numbers together. The nice thing about multiplying fractions is that we don't need common denominators. While some of these practice problems may require us to simplify at the end, others won't. And one more thing before we get started, if you want to download a free copy of this PDF, you can find a link to that in the description box below, and you can go ahead and print this out and do it with me. Otherwise, let's just jump right into it. For number one, we have one half times one half, so when we're multiplying fractions, we literally just can write one fraction bar and then multiply the numerators together, one times one, and the denominators together, two times two. On top, one times one is going to be one, and on the bottom, two times two is going to be four. And that's it. For number two, we have one half times one third, so on top we're gonna have one times one, and on bottom we have two times three. So one times one on top is one, and two times three is gonna be six on bottom. That's our final answer. For number three, we have one half times one fourth, so on top we're just gonna write one times one, and on bottom we'll write two times four. So on top one times one is going to be one, and two times four is gonna equal eight. For number four, we have two thirds times one fifth, so using one fraction bar, we're just gonna go ahead and write two times one in the numerator, then three times five in the denominator. I don't see anything in common or anything, so two times one is going to be two, three times five is going to be 15, so two fifteenths is gonna be the answer, or the product. Let's see, number five. For number five, we have five six times one half, so on top we'll just write five times one, and on bottom we'll write six times two. On top, five times one is going to be five, and then six times two is going to be 12. All right, so that's gonna be it. For number six, let's see, we have three over four multiplied by one over two, so let's do three times one on top, four times two on bottom. So on top, three times one is three, then four times two is gonna equal eight. For number seven, on top, let's write three times seven for the numerators, and then five times eight for the denominators. Three times seven is gonna be 21, and five times eight is gonna be 40. For number eight, we have two thirds times one third, so let's take the two times one on top, and the three times three on bottom. Two times one is going to be two, and three times three is gonna equal nine. So far for one through eight, none of these answers can be simplified. Uh, and so we will see if there are any coming up that we will have to though, okay? So let's check out number nine. Number nine looks like we have four thirds multiplied by two thirds. So let's do four times two on top and then three times three on bottom. Four times two is gonna be eight and three times three is gonna equal nine. And that's gonna be our answer. This one can't be simplified either. For number 10, we have four times three on top and five times seven on bottom, so lots of prime numbers here. Uh, if we multiply four times three is 12, then five times seven is 35. That'll be our answer. For number 11, let's multiply this five by four in the numerators and then the three by three in the denominators. So five by four is going to be 20 and then three by three is gonna be nine. So this would be our answer as an improper fraction, which is perfectly fine. But in case you wanted to write it as an improper fraction, we could go ahead and say, how many times does nine go into 20? Nine goes into 20 two times, because two times nine is 18, with two left over, so we could write two and two ninths also, okay? If we look at number 12, we can go ahead and multiply four and six in the numerator, and then five by one in the denominator. Four by six is gonna be 24, and five by one is going to be five. So that's the answer as an improper fraction, but as a mixed number, five goes into 24 four times, because four times five is 20, with four left over, so we're gonna have four fifths. For number 13, let's see what we got going on here. Let's scroll down so we have some more space. For number 13, we're gonna go ahead and rewrite this as seven times five on top, and then three times four on bottom. Lots of prime numbers here. Now, seven times five in the numerator is gonna be 35, and then three times four is gonna equal 12. Now, while this is our answer as an improper fraction, as a mixed number, let's think how many times 12 fits into 35. So 12, 24, 36, almost fits in three times, but only fits in two times with 11 left over, so two and 11 twelfths, okay? If we look at number 14, let's go ahead and multiply this three by five on top and the eight by one on bottom. So three times five is 15, eight times one is eight, and that would be our answer as an improper fraction. For a mixed number, we have eight and then 16, so it doesn't fit in twice, almost. Fits in one time with seven left over. So one and seven eighths as a mixed number. For number 15, let's go ahead and see what we got here. We have nine times five on top and then four times two on bottom. Nine times five is gonna be 45 and then four times two is gonna equal eight. 
And so this is our answer as an improper fraction, but as a mixed number, we have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and then 48, but 48 is too big. So can't do six, let's go with five. Five times eight is 40 with five left over. So it's five and five eighths as a mixed number. Okay, if you need to write out the long division, feel free to go ahead and do so. For number 16, let's see what we got. We have four times 11 in the numerators, and then on the bottom we have seven times five. So on top, four times 11 is gonna be 44, and then seven times five is gonna be 35. And that's our answer as an improper fraction, okay? And as a mixed number, think about how many times 35 will fit into 44. Definitely only one time, uh, let's see, with nine left over. So it's gonna be one and nine thirty-fifths. All right, so for the first 16 problems, none of these could be simplified. So all we had to do was multiply. Sometimes we could convert to mixed numbers, but there was no simplifying that we needed to do. All right, for 17, we have two thirds times one half. So be on the lookout to see if we can simplify anything. So we have two times one on top, then three times two on bottom. Now keep in mind, we can simplify or simplify when we have common factors on top and bottom here. So check this out. We have this two and two. If you see something on top and on bottom, you can go ahead and cross those out. And so you just are left with this one on top and this three on bottom, and that would be our final answer, right? If you didn't do that, you would get two over six, which then could be simplified after, and you'd get one over three as well. Okay, so that would be our best and final answer. For number 18, we have this three times two on top. And what we're gonna do now going forward is we're gonna try to write prime factorization. So for 17, everything was prime except for one. But for this uh, uh, four on the bottom here, be on the lookout, we're gonna go ahead and try to break this four down. So four breaks into two times two. So two times two, and then we have this three, okay? And so the reason why we're gonna do this is you're gonna see what we can cancel out. So this three and this three are gonna cancel out and we can go ahead and cross off a two and a two. Now the top isn't left with anything, so if there's nothing left, there's always a one, and on the bottom we have a two, so our final answer here is going to be one half, okay? For number 19, let's see what's going on here. We're gonna write some prime factorization, so make a little longer line with me here, right? Now which numbers can be broken down? This four, this 10, and this six. So what does four break into? Four breaks into two times two, and 10 breaks into two times five. The five from the beginning is just gonna stay the same and the six is gonna break into two times three. All right, so one long sentence and everything's a prime number here. Now what can cancel out? Well, the five and the five can go away and this two and this two can go away. So what are we left with? Two times two is going to be four and the three on bottom is still just gonna be a three. So the answer here is gonna be four thirds, also known as one and one third as a mixed number, okay? Looking at number 20, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and set up one long fraction bar here and see which ones are composite. So six and four are both composite. Three is gonna stay the same. What does six break into? Six breaks into two times three. What does four break into? Four breaks into two times two. And the five is just gonna hang out down there. Looks like they both have a two on top and bottom, but that is it. So on top we have three times three, which is nine. And on bottom two times five is gonna be 10. So nine tenths is gonna be our final answer. For 21, let's see what we have here. For 21, let's go ahead and set up a long fraction bar and see which one of these numbers are composite, which can be broken up. So four, six, and nine are all composite numbers here. What does four break into? Two times two. Six breaks into two times three. Nine breaks into three times three. And five is just gonna stay as five, okay? This uh, three on top and three on bottom are gonna cancel out, but I think that's all we have here. On top, two times two is four, times another two is gonna be eight. And on bottom, three times five is 15. So eight fifteenths would be our final answer. For 22, let's see what we got here. Uh, out of these numbers, threes are uh, prime, so these fours can be broken down. Four breaks into two times two, the three stays. Three stays here and four breaks into two times two. All right, so what can we cross out? Well, the threes match, so those go away. These twos match and these twos match. So if everything gets canceled out or crossed out, we're left with one over one. And so that final answer is just going to be one. Okay, for 23, uh, let's go ahead and see what is composite. It looks like it's this four and this eight are composite numbers. So five stays, four breaks into two times two, eight breaks into two times two times two, and the five stays. 
these fives cancel, these twos can cancel, and these twos can cancel. If there's nothing left on top, we're left with a one, and on the bottom we have a two, so one half is our final answer. All right, for 24, let's see. We have some composite numbers here of 10 and six. 10 is gonna break into two times five. Six is gonna break into two times three. On the bottom, we have a three times a one. Okay, let's see, look, let's look for some pairs here. So I think we only have this three and three to cancel out. I think that's it though. So on top, we have two times five, which is 10. 10 times two is 20. So we're gonna have 20 over, and we have this one, and this is just gonna end up being 20. So the answer isn't even a fraction, it's a whole number. Here's 25. All right, for 25, it looks like we have a mixed number multiplied by a fraction. So keep in mind, we cannot use these mixed numbers. We're gonna go ahead and turn these into improper fractions. So remember, we can do two times three, which is six, and six plus one is going to be seven. So if we go ahead and do that, we're gonna have here seven over three. Okay, that's the same thing as two and one thirds, multiplied by one over two. Okay, everything here is prime, so we can't simplify anything. So seven times one is seven, three times two is going to be six. And let's see here, that's an improper fraction. That is the final answer. As an improper fraction, as a mixed number, it's gonna be one and one sixth. For number 26, we have two thirds multiplied by three and three fourths. So this three and three fourths, let's go ahead and turn this into an improper fraction. So three times four is 12, 12 plus this three on top is going to be 15, okay? So let's go ahead and see what this is gonna be. It's gonna be 15 over four. That's what that improper fraction turns uh, into or that mixed number turns into as an improper fraction. And then we have this two thirds in front. Okay, so can we break some numbers down here? I think so, right? So 15 is composite and four is composite. So if we go ahead and break these down into some smaller pieces, two stays, 15 is three times five, three stays and the four breaks into two times two. All right, so these threes can cancel out and these twos can cancel out. And so I think we're just left here with five over two. That's as an improper fraction. As a mixed number though, we can turn this into two and a half. Okay, that's another version of the correct answer. All right, for number 27, we have two mixed numbers. We have two and a half over here, and we also have four and two thirds. All right, so both of these we're gonna wanna turn into improper fractions before we multiply, okay? So that's for this first one, two times two is four, four plus one is going to be five. So that's going to be five over two, all right? And then for the second one, this four and two thirds, four times three is 12, 12 plus two is 14. So that's going to be 14 over three. Okay, now we're gonna look for some composite numbers. I think we just have 14. I think the rest of them are all prime here. So let's rewrite this. Let's do five times and 14 breaks into two times seven. And on bottom we have two times three. What we can cancel out here are gonna be these twos. These twos cancel out. And then five times seven is gonna be 35. And then three on bottom is just gonna stay here. So that's our answer as an improper fraction. But as a mixed number, three fits into 35 11 times. That's 11 times three is 33. And we have two thirds left over. For 28, looks like we have two more mixed numbers. So we have three and one sixth, and then we have three and two thirds. All right, let's go ahead and turn these into some improper fractions, okay? So um, six times three is gonna be 18. 18 plus one is gonna be 19. So we're gonna have 19 over six, okay? And for the second fraction, we have three times three, which is nine. Nine plus two is 11. So we're gonna have 11 over three. Hmm. Now it looks like we got some prime numbers here. The only one that is composite is this six here. So not the friendliest uh, problem because nothing else can simplify. So we have 19 times 11, and then we're gonna have the six break into two times three times three. And I don't think anything has anything in common. <laughs> uh, so we have to do a little bit more work for this problem, unfortunately, um, but nothing that is uh, too difficult for us to do. So let's do 19 times 11 for the numerator since nothing cancels out. One times nine is nine, one times one is one. Put a placeholder, one times nine is nine, one times one is one. Add these two together, we have a nine. This is gonna be 10, carry the one, that's gonna be two. So let's see, this is gonna be 209 over, and what is two times three times three? I think that's going to be two times three is six, six times three is 18. So this right here would be our answer as an 
improper fraction, but as a mixed number, we could do that. We're gonna have to do a little bit of division here. I don't know this one. Uh, in my head, uh, 209 divided by 18. 18 doesn't fit into two, but it does fit into 20 once. One times 18 is 18. We have a remainder of two, bring down this nine. 18 fits into 29 just one time. One times 18 is 18. And then we are left with 11. So as an improper fraction, we have 209 over 18, but as a mixed number, we can say that's 11 and 11 eighteenths. All right, on to number 29. For 29, we have a mixed number of four and one fifths, and we're gonna multiply that by five fourteenths. So let's see, let's turn this four and one fifth into an improper fraction. So four times five is gonna be 20, 20 plus one is gonna be 21. So we'll have 21 over five multiplied by five over 14. Okay, so the 21 and the 14 are both composite and fives are prime. So let's, let's go ahead and just break down the 21 into three times seven. Okay, and let's break down the uh, 14 on bottom to two times seven. All right, so some nice stuff's gonna happen here. The fives are gonna cancel out and the sevens are gonna cancel out. So all we're left here are going to be the three on top and the two on bottom, which is three halves. And as a mixed number, this one's easier to do maybe mentally, is gonna be one and a half. For number 30, we have eight holes or eight over one multiplied by this four and a half. So four and a half, we're gonna have to turn into an improper fraction. This eight over one, let's just leave it alone as eight over one. And then this four and a half, four times two is eight. Eight plus one is gonna be nine. So that's gonna be the same thing as nine over two. Okay, now which one of these are composite? I think it's the eight and the nine. The one and two can't be broken down anymore. So what does eight break into? Eight breaks into two times two times two, and nine breaks into three times three. And on bottom, we still have one times two. All right, so these twos are gonna cancel out with each other, but I think that's it. And so on top, two times two is four. Four times three is going to be 12. 12 times three is 36. So we have 36 over one, which is really just 36 holes. All right, for 31, it looks like we have two mixed numbers. So we have this three and three fifths and four and one sixth. So both of these need to be turned into some improper fraction. So let's go ahead and do that here. So uh, three times five is 15. 15 plus three is going to be 18. So it's gonna be 18 over five. And then this uh, four times six is 24 plus one is gonna be 25. So we're gonna multiply this by 25 over six, okay? Let's look for some composites. So 25 is composite, 18 is composite, and six is composite. Let's go ahead and break those down into some smaller pieces here, right? 18 is two times nine, and nine is three times three. So it's two times three times three for 18. 25 is the same thing as five times five. Five is gonna stay here, and six breaks into two times three. So it looks like we can cancel out a five and a five, and a three and a three, and a two and a two. So on top, all we have is 15, and on bottom we have nothing, which is one. And so the answer here is just 15 holes, okay? Fraction, all canceled out, and we just left with the whole number. For this final one, for number 32, we have four and two fifths, and we're gonna multiply this by three and one elevenths, okay? So let's turn these into improper fractions first. And so we have four times five is 20, 20 plus two is 22. So this first uh, one is gonna be 22 over five. And for the second uh, mixed number, three times 11 is 33. 33 plus one is gonna be 34. So that is gonna end up being 34 over 11. Okay, so which one of these are composite? Well, I think it's 34 and 22. Five and 11 are both prime. All right, so 22 is even, so it's gonna be two times 11. And 34 is even, so it's gonna be two times 17. And then we have five times 11 on bottom. Okay. Now these 11s are gonna cancel out nicely, which is good. Makes it a lot smaller for us. And then, uh, well it's two times 17, we know that's 34, but then 34 times two is going to be 68. So we're gonna have 68 over five. Okay, that's our answer as an improper fraction. As a mixed number though, five is gonna fit into this 13 times with three left over. So it's gonna be 13 and three fifths. If you'd like to do the long division, feel free and be my guest just as I can see the, the process of it. Um, but I'm pretty sure 13 and 3 fifths is the correct answer.
And just like that, we covered 32 different practice problems where we were multiplying fractions. Again, it was kind of nice we didn't have to get common denominators. We could just literally multiply the tops and the bottoms together. And on the second 16, we just looked a little bit more carefully on when we could cross cancel versus when we couldn't. So again, sometimes you can simplify, but hopefully prime factorizations helped out with that process. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and letting me know in the comment section down below. And as always, keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.